thank you um, hello I'm Ishan uh, and uh, my co-author professor Dan Rajan is sitting over there uh, and the other co-author uh, dr. Chi Seng Chan is from University of Malaya uh, both of us are from uh, Wawasan Open University uh, before I start um, you know I need to bring up something uh, when we were having tea uh, professor Wayne said that you should believe everything I say it's it's not the case really you can argue <laughs> okay uh, today um, what I want to look at is um, well let's let's put it this way this paper was not written to provide answers it was written to ask questions so what I'm trying to do today is to ask a few questions and maybe point towards answers or, or potential answers to these questions well um, I, I hope to structure my my short talk I'm going to keep it uh, very light uh, around these things a bit of background theory I mean not the OER theory I, I'm sure we all know that a bit of literature uh, I am going to define a problem uh, then I'm going to tell you how we look for some answers and uh, which which raised more questions and uh, then uh, we are going to provide some more answers to it so uh, I, I'm, I'm sure at the end of all of that we will have more questions as well right uh, because we are you know doing this uh, as a uh, follow-up to the uh, OER Congress and the World Declaration I thought I'd I'd uh, use one of the statements uh, this is on searching and locating open educational resources obviously uh, everyone there thought that it is an important point and I've underlined and emboldened uh, specific and relevant those two words were my contribution to the OER declaration so <laughs> I'm quite proud of that and I thought I would uh, I would brag about that a little bit uh, <laughs> right um, it, what what it says is that uh, we actually need to find more tools and ways of locating OER it's not just locating OER but it's locating specific and relevant OER uh, I'll, I'll go into what specific and relevant means it's it's not a problem to find OER okay uh, there are plenty of material out there licensed under the Creative Commons license and you can actually locate each one of these things but the problem is to locate uh, material which are useful for your teaching and learning purposes so in this case uh, the first word is specific uh, uh, as the example states uh, you know a, a course from final year physics wouldn't be suitable suitable for high school physics so you know you have to p find the specific uh, open educational resource for your teaching the the second one is relevant you know when you say chemistry you know you will get X number of uh, resources on the web but you know you have that particular piece of uh, material should be relevant to your teaching and learning needs then and quality we had a debate about quality in the morning uh, my take on quality and this is the take by many that's why in the declaration they have omitted the word quality because I suggested three words uh, specific relevant and quality quality is perceived so it all depends on what you perceive the material to be uh, let's say for example if I'm looking at a computer science piece of material it might be of quality for me for my purposes my teaching purposes but if you ask a MIT professor then he might say no it's not it's useless so um, again um, I, I uh, one of the previous speakers said we actually develop the material the OER and give it to you and leave it to you to decide uh, how to use it so again uh, uh, quality is perceived now the question is if quality is perceived then how can search engines bring quality material or useful material uh, for use and reuse because search engines is you know how we find these materials uh, other than repositories even in repositories we have to use their search mechanism because we don't have the time to browse through 30,000 resources so let's uh, let's look at that a little bit more right again another thing I'm proud of uh, instead of quality we we developed a framework called desirability this is a uh, parametric measure uh, of 
the uh, level of openness uh, built on Wiley's 4R models, which uh, Vincent mentioned just now, the level of access uh, of whether a, a piece of material is editable, is it PDF, is it doc, is it open office, uh, or is it text HTML, and, and the relevance, which, which looks at the match between the uh, content of the material and the actual use that you are using it for. So uh, with desirability, you, when you plug in the desirability into a search mechanism, you can actually get uh, a, a set of material which are somewhat useful, which are open, which are accessible, and which are relevant. Then it's up to you to go through them and see whether if they're of any quality. Uh, but what this does is it actually cuts down the noise uh, which you will receive through a conventional search mechanism. Moving on, uh, as I said, I, I'll look at a little bit of uh, literature. The literature says um, it's the current search mechanisms are incapable of uh, searching uh, relevant and usable open educational resources, uh, and uh, there is difficulty in finding quality OER matching a specific context. Well, I wanted to test this theory, so I went on to Google. I go went into advanced search. I, I searched for uh, essentially CC by stuff. Uh, on chemistry, and you can see the results here. Uh, if you if you if you Google often, uh, I'm sure you do. Uh, you would know that uh, you will only look at the first few, maybe first ten uh, results, right? And out of this, you know, the the results over here, the first three are Wikipedia. Then we have Wikibooks, which is usable. I'm not saying Wikipedia is not usable, but uh, us as academics tend to shy away from Wikipedia a little bit. Uh, Wikibooks is usable. Then there's a, a International Journal of Chemistry, which is easy by. I actually checked, but uh, you wouldn't be able to use that in your in your courses, most probably. And the remaining again, uh, more Wikipedia. You can do it right now. You, you can use the Wi-Fi to uh, do this search. So, the the verdict. I guess the the literature is is correct. Uh, uh, you cannot. Uh, really use uh, current search technologies. I mean, if Google can't do it, then you know uh, I, I will be bold enough to say uh, some of the other uh, search engines can't do it either. Uh, and there is no single search engine uh, available to uh, locate uh, resources from all the repositories, thousands of repositories available. And uh, again, the desirability comes into play. They don't look at the level of openness. They don't look at the, uh, 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 le uh, the relevance and the accessibility. Right. Um, so the, the question is, knowing this, uh, knowing that we can't find useful OER, uh, you know, how is it affecting the Asian region with respect to the use of use and reuse of OER? Uh, we did a survey. It was a large project funded by IDRC. Thank you very much, IDRC. Uh, and uh, this was just a part of it. We published the, the data, the preliminary data, uh, myself and Professor Dan Rajan, uh, along with uh, many other collaborators of whom some are here. Uh, and uh, we got around 580 responses from around 10 countries. And uh, it was an extensive survey, but uh, the, the part I'm concentrating on today is just, the, just one or two items which concentrated on searching and location of OER. Uh, the data uh, on the survey and the project is available on the OER Asia website if you want to go through it. So uh, what, did we, uh, what did we find? Um, so the first question is, do we like OER? It seems like we do. Uh, and out of all of these people, you know, plenty said I've used it and plenty more said I will use it. So that's, you know, question one down. So how do we get OER? Uh, they said we freely download it from the internet. Uh, if, if you look at the, the data we published, it was published during the, um, the regional forum leading up to the OER Congress. Uh, we said that I think people are confused between open educational resources and digital resources. So that's why they, they seem to think uh, his, uh, his is nodding his head because he was part of, the, part of the group. And I think that's why they said we freely downloaded from the internet, which is you know, not, not, uh, not uh, untruthful. Uh, you do download it from the internet. And um, how do we find OER? We Google it. Um, <laughs> OK, so we tried Googling it, right? We couldn't find it. And these people seem to think that Googling will give you the resources you need. 
uh, I'm, I'm just using Google as an example, you know, it's ge generic search engines, you know, such as, you know, Google, Yahoo, and Bing, and, you know, then that it goes on, you know, specific search engines and, you know, the repository specific uh, searches and things like that. So the main point is, uh, you know, people use Google, right? So um, the literature says you can't use generic search, search metho methodologies and there aren't any search mechanisms to find these things, uh, you know, find desirable OER, but people seem to use Google. So, you know, question mark. So, so what do we do? I'm, I'm, I'm actually going very fast now. Uh, <laughs> so what do we do? Uh, well, uh, one recommendation uh, would be for people to at least in the Asian region, to stick to the well-known repositories, you know, such as Connections, uh, such as Wiki Educator, uh, you know, or, or go to the portal repositories uh, uh, or the content portal repositories, uh, such as you know Merlot or OER Commons, and you know try to find it there and use their search mechanisms. But then again, their search mechanisms are, are tailored to that particular portal, and you will only get resources depending on their algorithm and I'm pretty sure they don't factor in desirability into their algorithm that's why we came up with it so that's the recommendation but really let's 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 think about this now going into each of these repositories uh, let's say you want to find a piece of material on chemistry from a repository how do you go about doing that this is an academic who has other work as well right you know we have to watch YouTube we have to go on Facebook and <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, uh, on top of doing all of that, how do we find OER material? We have to identify uh, what which material to look for. You know, okay, okay, I'm going to search for something on C++ programming, right? Then we identify the search queries: undergraduate C++ programming. You know, might work. Uh, then we go into the repositories. Oh, this guy said this repository is good. Maybe I'll go and give it a go there. Uh, run multiple queries on the search mechanism. Uh, read each resource. Now, when you run a, ser a search query, it'll give you, you know, maybe on average 40 odd responses in one of these repositories. You can go through some of them. Uh, it's, it's not that the first five are the most relevant. You know, you'll have to most probably go through the 30 or 40 before you find something useful. Uh, identify useful resources. So that's from that particular repository and repeat steps three to six on multiple repositories. I mean, do we have time to do all of that? I would certainly give up after the first try and, and only stick to you know whatever I find on the first repository. Maybe if we are really keen, uh, like for example, if uh, I, I, I created a course using OER as well, you know, just like Vincent and you know, we might, because we are interested, we might go on to three repositories instead of you know, one. But really, you know, if, if this movement is to pick up, do you really think academics will, you know, go to the trouble of going to 20 repositories and running multiple queries and reading hundreds of resources before locating any OER? So there's a fundamental problem there, which needs to be addressed. So on, on second thought, um, using these repositories might not be the, not be the solution because it's, it becomes uh, a lack of options rather than a choice. You go to a repository, uh, a established, a reputed repository, you find a piece of material and you say, okay, that's reputed, you know, and I don't have any other choice. Oh, I don't have any other option. But if you, if you really look at the repositories and the material available throughout the world, you know, uh, for example, you know, UNISA has material uh, you know, the African Virtual University has material, Wawasan Open University has material. Uh, I have material on my blog, which are uh, CC BY. No one knows about my blog, right? So it's ishantalks.com, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I might have some good material, but no one knows about it. So, you know, there's no point in generating thousands and thousands of material and putting it up there and just forgetting about it. There should be a way to go and search and link all of these materials together and get the most relevant or the most desirable resource for your teaching and learning uh, 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 needs. So um, is there a solution? Well, maybe, you know, um, that's, that was my question and this is partially my, my answer to it. 
uh, we, uh, a bunch of us, uh, Dr. Chan, myself, and Prof. Tam over there, uh, we actually came up with a system, a uh, artificial intelligence based search engine called OER Scout, uh, which goes against the traditional classification approach, uh, which was explained earlier, where you get a poor soul to sit down and classify uh, or write down all the categories of a particular domain and to categorize all the OER into those domains. It's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not feasible, it's not scalable. So what we decided to do was to go with the uh, clustering approach, where we actually get the algorithm to go in, read an OER material, understand what that material is about, and auto autonomously cluster it. So my uh, Prof. Paul will be talking about uh, uh, metadata, uh, and you know this is kind of s stepping on the toes of you know metadata people. This will completely ignore metadata. If you take a piece of material in mathematics and call it chemistry, a search engine will pick that up as chemistry, but it's really mathematics. But uh, in this case, you eliminate the human error. It actually goes into the material. It reads the material and understands that it's in, on mathematics. Then it understands that it's on calculus, and then it understands that it's CC BY or whatever, and then it's, uh, it understands that it's a HTML document, and it calculates the desirability and brings it to you as a OER material which is highly desirable and in calculus uh, without anyone actually defining anything. So, right. That's the prototype. That's how it looks. It's not a conventional search engine. It, 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 it is a, it is a uh, evolving learning algorithm, so it's more suggestive. Uh, as you can see, uh, when you go into a, when you click on a, that's 17 minutes, right? Oh, thank you. Uh, when you go, when you click on a particular suggested topic, it, it, it will not bring you search results, just like Google. It will give you suggested topics. You click on a suggested topic, and it will bring all the resources, the, the most desirable resources from all over the place, every single repository, even my blog, uh, and, and give it to you with the desirability index over there. And uh, then on the side, it will give you related topics. So if you clicked on chemistry, it will actually tell you there are other topics on chemistry. So why don't you click on those and see what you get? So it, it, works in a, it works in a very interactive way. So at the moment, this is a prototype, uh, and it's, it's uh, run by the user. But uh, the next phase of it uh, actually will take a syllabus. For example, if you're doing a course on Java, it will ask you for your syllabus. And it will actually compile the most desirable resources on each topic and give it to you. So you don't need to do all that searching anymore. You just need to concentrate on the quality aspect, which is reading and doing your academic job. Your academic job is not to search and locate OER. Your academic job is to read and understand and see whether that's useful for your students. So this system will actually give you that ability. Right. Um, being the shameless promoter of myself and, and, and building up. <laughs> if you want to know more about OER Scout, you better come to Japan. Uh, because uh, I'll be presenting the prototype in the, at the AOU conference. Uh, Professor Yamada is nodding over there because he knows that. And, uh, and yeah, and the conclusions, there are no conclusions really. What we conclude is that there is a problem and you, most of you will agree, I guess. And the solution, we are still working on it. Come to Japan. <laughs> right, acknowledgements. I, I, I really need to acknowledge uh, IDRC at this point because the, the broader project was funded by IDRC. I, I wish to uh, acknowledge the, the uh, co-investigators from all over the place. Uh, some of them are here. And uh, also Wawasan Open University as well as University of Malaya. That's 20. So thank you very much. Spot on. Thank you, Ishan.